Hey brothers, what is going on? JK, your brother in this struggle on the way back from the gym. Today I'd like to talk to you guys about identity. And the reason that I'd like to speak about identity is because of something which happened last night. So last night, someone told me that I was putting on weight, okay? Someone said like, hey man, you know, you're getting a little chubby around the waistline. <laughs> and that triggered me. I fucking flipped out. I mean, I didn't show that I flipped out, but something clicked in my head and my mind was racing. And it was only throughout today. I just finished all together, maybe three and a half, four hour workout. Yeah, I'm not kidding. <laughs> including rather long cardio, and I'm on my way back home now. But I had the opportunity to think about why I was so triggered by that. And I'm sharing it with you guys because it has everything to do with recovery from any out of control behavior. Of course, we're talking about porn and masturbation mostly on this channel. When I was growing up, my dad had at one point told me when I was working out, started working out when I was about 15 years old, and I'd started doing, you know, like crunches and push-ups. And I'd made this barbell set and dumbbell set out of old car axes. And I got, went to a junkyard and found those. I put cement in a bucket and then put it onto the axles that I'd gotten from the junkyard. And these were my, you know, these were my weights. Now just rusty pieces of metal in our garage because we couldn't afford weights and my dad Oh, we didn't have money for wake ups. My dad was like, you know, you want weights, go make them, right? Or do push ups or whatever. And so that's how I started working out. But one day my dad told me, like, JK, you can work out as much as you like, but you're never going to maintain a six pack. And I was like, why? He's like, because the men in our family have, he called it a spare tire, which is fat all around. Not just fat in the front as you get older, but fat on the sides and like going into your back right like back fat the <laughs> and you know it is what it is and that's how my dad was i saw him like he was pretty well built but he worked out but he still had that role of fat and he's like it's in our family my dad used to be a boxer as well in his teens and early 20s and he's like you can't he was you know i saw pictures of him look fit lean six pack but he was like jk you're not going to to maintain it and you know i defied him as I defied everybody else. Like anybody who tells me I can't do anything, I'm like, fuck you, I'm gonna do it. Big chip on the shoulder kind of guy, getting better about it these days. But for years, well into my early 30s, I'm in my mid 30s now, I maintained a body fat percentage of 10 to 12% body fat, except for, I would say honestly about maybe three or four occasions for a short period of time. I was always fit, but my body fat probably went up to about 15 to 17%. But apart from that, for the most part, I have maintained a very low body fat. Well, being told that I look that way caused me to go and take a picture of myself in the mirror last night after somebody told me this. Before I went to bed, I did that and I was just like, fuck. I am fucking overweight. I, I don't have a six pack as we speak right now. I don't have a visible one. And so as I worked out today and I started thinking about why this was such a big deal to me, I realized that it was such a big deal because it was my identity. My identity is the identity of a man who spends most of his life at 10 to 12% body fat with some muscle mass. And that identity had been reinforced by what people told me and by the way I looked. So my girlfriend, women that I had dated in the past and hooked up with, they had always gone like, wow, you know, like you look great, like you got a sexy body. You know, guys would compliment me and be like, man, I don't know how you do it. Old high school friends as I you know, got into my late 20s and early 30s, I was still maintaining it, and they would send me messages, and they were like, bro, you still got it, man. You've been working out since, 
you know, like high school, like how do you do it? You're so disciplined. And all of this formed my identity. But that got me thinking about you guys. And make no mistake, I'm gonna drop down to 10% body fat within two weeks. And if you guys are interested in actually seeing that journey, just let me know in the comment section. And if I get enough comments, I will show you guys the process. I will show you the picture I took last week and I will show you how I get down to 10% body fat in two weeks, all right? But let me know in the comment section, not a priority. But I got to thinking about you guys and thinking about the other things that I've done in my life that I place on a very high standard. And one of them has been my behavior with pornography and masturbation. See, in the past, I would try so many different things. You know, like, oh, I'm gonna use willpower. I'm gonna stay off porn for 30 days. I'm gonna stay off pornography for 90 days. At one point, I even thought of buying a little chastity belt with a lock. I'm ashamed to say this, but it's the truth to put on my dick because I just couldn't stop jerking off in the morning and in the evening when I went to bed and when I woke up. At other times when I was super depressed because of my porn addiction, I contemplated cutting my dick off all kinds of fucking crazy things chemical castration if you're out there and you're like jk i'm at a low point you don't fucking understand i fucking understand because i've been at that low point with almost everything in my life with my finances with my dick with my sexual performance with my body with every fucking major thing in my life i have been in the shitter i've been in the fucking dumps so I started thinking, how did I change these things in my life? And I tried all those different things, but I realized that just as with my body, none of those things changed until I changed the way I saw myself and viewed myself, right? So I'll give you guys an example. Let's say with meditation. I always thought meditation was cool. It was something that I would try to do once or twice a year. I would try and meditate. I would do all these little things. But I would always say, I meditate. But when I became serious about it and committed to it, I noticed that I changed the way I spoke about meditation. I didn't say, I meditate. I said, I am a meditator. My identity was the identity of a person who meditated. And meditation, to be absolutely honest with y'all, is the one thing that I dropped in and out of, and I still do. It's the one thing that proves to me that a person can change their identity for better or for worse. <laughs> but we'll, we'll talk about that another day. The same thing with my identity of myself when it came to working out and looking a certain way. My identity was the identity of a man who is 10 to 12% body fat. Like, that's me. I work out, I go to the gym, I believe I need to look fit and muscular and lean. I believe I should never be ashamed to take off my shirt, like, for my entire life, right? That's just the way I think. Like, I'll figure out what happens when I'm in my, you know, my 80s and 90s, but well into my 70s, I know I can maintain, you know, about 12% body fat because I see people who do that. And with pornography and masturbation, I also change my identity. I change my identity to a man who doesn't watch pornography. I don't watch porn. I just don't. I don't watch porn. And that's how I changed it. And brothers, for those of you who are trying, you can try different tips. You can try different techniques. If you're watching my videos, if you've been trying to change your behavior, I don't care how long, how much time you've put into this, how much therapy you've done, I don't care how much money you've spent. If you do not change your identity, you will not reboot. It is not going to last, right? So brothers, just keeping it real, you gotta change your identity. And when you change your identity, one of the things that happens is that you will get agitated. And that's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to be agitated. You will get agitated and very uncomfortable when you're in a certain situation that doesn't live up to your standards. Just as I am agitated right now, 
because I'm not sitting at less than 12% body fat, right? And I have a belly, yeah. So I'm agitated about that. The same thing goes with your finances. If you've struggled with your finances for a long time, and even if you haven't struggled with your finances, if you're doing well, but you've always tried to get to a certain level, so let's say your business is making $250,000 a year, and you're like, well, I wanna have a million dollar business. Well, if you are struggling with that, I guarantee you that it is an issue that has to do with your belief and not the tips and the tricks and all the business strategies that you're applying to your business. Similarly, if you're in your career and you're trying to make six figures, but you keep struggling with it, again, it comes down to your identity. Like what is the amount that you identify with? There are some people that if they see a certain amount of money in their bank, if it drops below a certain level, they freak out, they feel poor. I know people like that. I know people who if their bank balance, when I say bank balance, I mean just cash on hand, drops below six figures. If some, they make some expense and they look at my kind of like, holy shit, it's $97,000. They are fucking freaking out because they identify with a baseline of a certain amount of money sitting in their accounts. And that might surprise some of you, but there are people out there who the standard is a whole different level with their net worth and different things. So again, brothers, it comes down to identity. I'm gonna talk more about this over the coming weeks, but I'm back home. I just wanted to get that off my chest and let you guys know that identity does change everything. I'm JK, your brother in this struggle. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you enjoy these videos, please don't forget to subscribe. And brothers, listen, this channel doesn't grow through marketing or anything right i see a lot of you guys going like oh jk should have this number of subscribers and all of those things i'm not really attached to that but if you do want to see the community grow then please share the video right share the video with other guys at least recommend the videos to other guys guys in your family cousins you know best friends guys who are struggling we have a system that works and i want to help more brothers out there right to so subscribe and share i appreciate you guys have a wonderful day